Hey folks, welcome today. We're doing mum cuttings. Um, this is our overwintered mother plants. We have a variety of uh, different types of spiders, regular in curves, and all these kinds of fancy names for beautiful fall mums. And what we're going to be doing today is, is these guys have gotten to the size now where we can do some cuttings and we're going to propagate these for what we call our one and dones. And what these guys will do is, is they'll root and then we'll plant them rather intensely and we'll show that in a later video when we actually plant them. But the idea is they grow up and they basically make a bloom and that's the end of it. We let winter kill them off. And we keep this stock of mother plants uh, to be able to do that. Cuttings are really easy for softwood cuttings and once we do the actual rooting part uh, we'll show that back up at the greenhouse. But today you know what we look for is a plant that has multiple stems. This variety is called River City. It's a beautiful uh, kind of a, a apricot type color, nice big bloom. And what we're going to look for when we do our cuttings is we're going to take about the top three inches or so, three to four inches, and we're just going to snip it off at the nearest bud. And this is ultimately what will root. And what we're going to be doing is we'll take off most of the leaves, leaving just the center. What we're trying to do is, is we want the center where, where the real growth hormones and the, and the growth tip is uh, left on. We don't want to take, make, you can make cuttings out of other parts, but it will take longer to root um, and basically get a decent plant. Um, so what we're going to do is use this section and we'll cut as many as we can. Uh, the idea is that uh, hopefully they'll all root, but they never do. It's usually a percentage. And so let's just cut a bunch of them and we'll get up there and start to do the rooting. Now, one of the things you'll notice as I'm doing this is I'm going around and I'm basically at the same time I'm doing this is I'm essentially giving the plant its first pinch. And what I'll do is we'll just take these guys. I'm not going to strip leaves off too much out here in the greenhouse itself. We'll just put a rubber band around it. There's approximately probably about eight to ten here. Get a little little pail of water. We'll just put them in there for temporarily to keep them going. The other thing we're going to do too is we're going to put a tag in this bucket because this bucket's going to be all River City so that we know when we get up there what it is. Because River City will look a lot like Apricot Alexis, which looks a lot like, which looks a lot like. Once you get mums cut from the plant, they start to all look alike. So you need to make certain that you keep a... Um, a good uh, tagging system going. Okay, so we got a bunch of these guys to cut. We'll get a, a few uh, buckets of these going and then we'll get them rooted up. Okay, so we got all our cuttings from down below. We've got a, a few buckets of the different varieties we want to do. They've been sitting in water and uh, kind of keep them hydrated for the whole time. Now, you can actually root these things in different ways. You could use soil blocks we have in the past, but um, we've just found that actually the most convenient has been used uh, old plastic plug trays. These are 72s that are uh, wide bottom and on the, on the bottom, so it's got good drainage in it. And uh, the mix we use is really similar. It's just a uh, Pro Mix peat and perlite 50% mix. And we just fill this guy up. Uh, we make sure that the moisture is uh, pretty good in the mix. 
kind of knock out the oversized material. Now one of the things we do is, just for the heck of it, is we'll use a stack of these trays to kind of like um, tamp it down. That just makes sure that it's nice and full. And uh, if we need to, we can put a little more in. Just right over the top. And then what we do is we'll set this in a, a, a three system type tray. We have a bottom tray for rigidity, and then we have a actual uh, solid tray so that any moisture that leaks out will uh, stay in and down below will actually get caught in a capillary mat as, as an insert. And the idea behind this is, is that even though the bottom of this isn't touching, it's going to keep some humidity down at the bottom of it to keep it kind of from drying out. Then the last thing we do before for preparation is uh, we'll thoroughly wet the medium. You want it to be good and wet before you put those cuttings in. And we're doing the actual transplant here at night at, well, sunset. Um, and the reason behind it is is uh, we want to give these guys kind of a head start, take them out of the heat of the day so that uh, it's done in a cooler atmosphere. Also films better. So we can just let that kind of sit for a second. Let's talk about what we do with the actual cuttings themselves. Um, there's all kinds of different rooting hormones out of there. And I think we covered that in our last video when we uh, we're undoing our hardwood cuttings from last winter. We use on our softwood cuttings uh, Rapid Root, which is a powder, and there'll be a link in down in the show description, of, you know, about it and where to get it. Um, we use this basically with the softwood uh, type things. The softwood means that the the actual stem itself is still somewhat green, pliable, and soft. A hardwood uh, cutting is means that uh, the, the stem is actually hardened up, it's got more cellulose in it, it's typically very rigid. So like a branch on a dormant apple tree is a hardwood cutting, but an actual um, slip off of, or a cutting off of a mum plant, which is still green and quite flexible, is called a softwood cutting. And that's what we use the powder for. Now when we do hardwood cuttings, we use a liquid that is a dilution. And it's, the liquid is, it's the same chemical but we can control the concentration a little better. A hardwood cutting tends to root better when it has a little bit of a higher concentration than what's in the powder itself. So that's why we use something like Woods Cutting Solution where you can change the dilution ratio. But we're not doing that today, but I just want to set that one aside. You could use the liquid uh, rooting hormone or softwood cuttings too. It's just a matter of how you want to control the dilution. This just takes that step out. So all we need to do is just take some of it out of it. You want to make sure that you're not dipping your cuttings into the actual jar itself. So you want to take it out and just kind of put it on the lid, you know, just some, just enough of it. Um, I'm probably maybe put a little bit too much out because all we're going to want to do is just kind of coat the outside of the actual root, rooting cutting itself. Okay. Before we do that, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to just kind of dibble a hole in this well-soaked tray so that we can put the slip into it. So let's just take care of that. Okay, these were a group of 10. We, we, when we did our cuttings this morning, we put them in groups of 10. This variety is called River City. And uh, what we're going to try to do is a complete tray. Hopefully we, we cut enough bunches of River City, but uh, at least if we can do uh, complete rows across, we'll be okay. But we cut these guys a little bit longer than normal. Realistically, the only thing we're really going to need on here is not these leaves down here. I got my trusty 
handy dandy kangaroo bag. And we're probably only going to want to have about that much of the stem. So we're actually maybe a little bit ahead of where we need to be. So we'll just kind of cut the extra off there. Now the last thing we do before we put the rooting hormone on is we're going to score. This is a floral knife. And we're just going to score it at an angle so that we open up as much of that cambium as you can. Now it's just a simple little angled score. Okay. And what we're going to do is just put a little rooting hormone on it doesn't have to be terribly much and then it just simply goes into the hole and we push that around it if you have big leaves what you can do too is you can just cut the leaf in half and you go oh my gosh I'm cutting the leaf in half but actually that helps uh, conserve moisture so this guy's got it we tamped it around it if we need to put a little more um, soil around it. Sometimes that's the case. It just settles out. We can put a little more around it. And then we just do the next one. It's kind of the same idea. Take off the excess leaves. Uh, you can cut the, the bigger leaves in half now as we're doing it to kind of speed up the process. Okay, it looks like maybe I'm going to take about a bit of that off. And then again, score at an angle. And what we did is we opened up that cambium. And we'll put some rooting hormone on it, on the end and on that open wound. And that is what's going to get the hormone into the plant itself. Now again, maybe a little light on the soil around it. Not that big of a deal. So, it's just uh, lather, rinse, and repeat. You know, we just take off the big guys off the outside, cut the excess off, maybe I'd cut a little more off of that one, cut that leaf in half, and again, slice it at an angle, make sure we got rooting hormone on it, and then stick it into the medium. And we'll just keep doing that until we fill out the entire tray. Now, we'll show you that tray as it's filled out, and ultimately in the end of what we're going to do with it is we're going to come back through again. We're going to wet it down with these guys in it, uh, and then we're going to put a humidity dome over it. Now, some people say, well, what's a humidity dome? These are just simple, you know, clear plastic dome. Uh, this variety, it, we like it because it's made by... Um, Sun, sleeve, sun leaves and what it has is it has the ability to vent so as an example you have vents at the top of this thing that can turn and can open so the idea here is that we can get enough airflow in or we can cut that airflow out so the idea is 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 there's enough fresh air coming in but enough excess humidity getting out but still controlling a high humidity level inside so what we're going to want to do once we get this completely filled up with with cuttings is at least for the first week we're going to want to keep that humidity level up we want to ha have this not in anywhere where there's direct sun uh, you definitely want to keep it on you know someplace where it's at least 60 degrees um, if you're cold climate, you could still use a heat mat on a low setting. Um, for us this time of year, just keeping it out of sunshine on a lower underneath a bench um, that gets maybe limited indirect light is good enough. Uh, and typically what we'll see is we'll see that the humidity dome won't be needed after about seven to 10 days and you can take that off because at that point it's starting to form small rootlets. So today is May 3rd, we did this, and we anticipate we'll be putting these in the ground uh, by the end of the month. So these guys being softwood with the rooting hormone, they're gonna root real fast. So let's finish out this tray and we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, we've got the entire tray done now. Uh, most of it is River City 
we got it looks to me like about 60 of those guys and then we filled out the back of the tray with Judith Baker which is another variety um, so the last step we'll do before we put the humidity dome on is we'll just kind of gently wet these guys down and the idea is we're trying to get the soil in the cell to kind of pack around the stem itself and apply some humidity to the leaves Okay, that's all we need to do with that. My handy assistant will take that. Okay, what we've done is we've set the humidity dome to be open at the top so that we have excess humidity slipping out and this dome will fit pretty much right over our individual plants. Some of the leaves might touch the edges a little bit see cobweb our friendly cat has come to inspect and that is all we need to do except that we don't want to flip it on the ground um, put it in in a spot where it is out of direct light but still has a bit of light to do photosynthesis I check them on a daily basis and if it's been a warm day I may check them twice just to make certain that there's still humidity in here I may come in and miss them once in a while uh, for the first week is basically it and then by that point um, they're going to be well on their way if they're going to root to form a callus and they're going to start absorbing some of the moisture that's in the soil. We want to make certain that we keep the soil mix around it not saturated but moist and that it's well drained. So when you do you make a mix be sure that you put enough perlite in there that you know you get enough enough air and moisture it's kind of a 50-50 a mix uh, with peat and perlite is what we use. You can also use sand. Some people use a uh, very coarse sand and uh, that they've had good luck with that too. Again, if you're in a cool area, bottom heat about 60, 65 degrees. If not, they should just be fine, you know, in, in a protected area of your greenhouse or, or, you know, somewhere in the shade. So that's how we do our softwood cuttings on mums. I want to thank you for joining us today and uh, if you have any comments be sure to leave it down below if you're new to our channel please feel feel uh, free to subscribe hit the like button if you can that's always appreciated and i uh, hope you guys all have a good day bye